Welcome to the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm Catherine Tomlinson and I founded an eco-conscious pottery company called Oxford Clay. Now I don't just make pottery, I make resources such as books and courses for other potters who want to be more eco-conscious in their pottery practice. And that's what this podcast is all about. It's about me sharing everything I've learned with you and I can't wait to get started. Let's go. Hello. So before we get on with the episode, I wanted to tell you about two completely free guides that I've made just for you about pottery. And the first guide is called how to make a pottery glaze. So if you've ever been curious about how to make your own pottery glaze, this guide will show you exactly how to make your own glaze from start to finish. It tells you all the ingredients you need. It tells you step by step how to make the glaze, how to stay safe when glaze making. Um, and it's got a stoneware glaze recipe in there. Um, and if you've been curious about how to fire pottery, um, I have also made a guide on electric kiln firing. So um, this guide will tell you all the different terms that's used in like kiln firing um, and what they mean. And it also takes you through the exact firing schedule that I use to do my bisque firing and also stoneware glaze firing. So it's got all the temperatures in there, all the timings in there. Um, and both of these both of these guides are available from the Oxford Clay website at www.oxfordclay.co.uk forward slash resources for potters. Okay, let's get on with the episode. Hello, welcome back to the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm Catherine Tomlinson and it's so nice to be here with you today. I'm going to be talking to you about an FFP3 face mask. And um, so on the face of it, you might think, well, what's this got to do with pottery? Um, but FFP3 face masks are um, one of the kind of most essential pieces of pottery equipment. If you're going to be doing anything in pottery to do with um, clay dust or um, crushed rock, you really need an FFP3 face mask. So um, yeah, what I wanted to talk to you today was uh, about was what an FFP3 face mask is, um, why you need one, and then we're going to talk about some like four specific situations which you would really need to use an FFP3 face mask in pottery. Okay, so let's get going. <laughs> so, um, so pottery, you know, on the whole is an extremely safe um, hobby <laughs> uh, activity. <laughs> um, you, there aren't many hazards in pottery at all, but one hazard that there is in pottery is um, breathing in um, very, very small particles that are um, either clay, clay dust or rock dust. And this can actually be really harmful for your lungs. So it's really, really important that when you're um, working with any powders at all, that you wear the proper um, protection um, proper respiratory protection for your lungs because the, the par tiny particles can can actually go into your lungs and they can they can um you know cause long-term harm basically to your to your lungs so an ffp3 face mask is basically the absolute lowest level of protection that you need when working with powders. So any other uh, face mask, say like if it's just something covering your nose and mouth, or if it's like, um, you know, you can get those kind of like painting, decorating type masks and stuff, you know, or if you're kind of sanding wood or something, that literally just elastic and they're kind of, you know, something covering your face. Um, those are not going to protect you from pottery powders. Um, so an FFP3 face marks that basically the features of it are that it is um so it's kind of made of a kind of soft uh, like rubbery type material and um it forms a seal around your nose and mouth so it just kind of goes on your face forms a seal around your nose and mouth and it's held on by elastic straps um that are sort of held on over the back of your head and it um, the one i've got 
um, I'm holding up if you're watching um, if, on the video you can see it but if you're listening on the podcast basically there's two straps that go around the back of your head um, mine's blue and it's got these kind of um, kind of larger uh, like kind of pieces on the on the back that are kind of help help it to stick on like the <laughs> help it to stay on the back of your head help the straps to stay on the back of your head um, and help the master to be held really securely onto your face forming um, a, a good seal around your nose and your mouth um, so another feature of an FFP3 face mask is that it, it often will have some kind of um, kind of filtration system that you will then need to um, kind of regularly change. So my one has this kind of like, uh, it's almost like a kind of, if, if you imagine like a fish gill type um, sort of situation, it's got these kind of little tiny gills of um some kind of filtration fabric it looks like it's either like a fabric or a paper and they're folded up and there's loads of them and and them and them all together they will create a kind of uh, a very f a filter that will filter out very very fine powders so they're kind of all folded up and there's two um sections of them on the mask and what I need to do is I need to change these um so I've I've got uh, spares that I basically can change um when these um th might be full up with powders and they they're not working properly anymore I can just switch them out and um, switch new ones in into the mask so it's working properly again so that's essentially what a an FFP3 face mask is doing. It's making sure that no fine powders get into your lungs at all. So what would you actually need um, an FFP3 face mask for? Um, you know, what scenarios would you be using one of these in? Because I have to say, when I did pottery evening classes, when I learned pottery at evening classes, um, I didn't use an FFP3 face mask and generally, you know, it's not something you would see used in evening classes unless someone's doing, you know, something quite specialist. Um, so let's run through the different scenarios because when you, maybe if you're, you know, starting to, you know, you want to maybe uh, start making glazes on your own or you want to start, you know, maybe making clay or you want to work with kind of, um, you know, maybe you want to work with like ashes like plant ashes and make glazes um you know th that's the scenario when you would start needing to to use your own face mask so um in like a generally like a pottery class you're not really going to be doing any of those activities you're just going to be kind of like making stuff and then at the end of your pottery lesson like i had <laughs> basically we used to have a really kind of strict tidying up time which uh, we used to have quite a long time to tidy up it was kind of like you know even maybe like 10 15 minutes where everybody in the whole class was just like tidying up <laughs> and like you know there'd be one person like wiping the tables um someone would come in afterwards and like wipe the floor and it would just mean that all that clay you know any clay dust was kept to an absolute minimum because the pottery um classroom was like totally clean so generally that's why you don't see ffp3 face masks you know in pottery classes because the kind of activities you're doing aren't really what you would you know use one for and also the room is kept very clean so you know you're going to be safe from clay dust basically so yeah let's talk about the different scenarios um okay so the first scenario that you, you would definitely need an FFP3 face mask would be if you were making your own pottery glaze. Okay, so lots of ingredients um, of pottery glazes are very, very fine powders. And these, you know, can damage your lungs so that when you buy um like <laughs> if you buy something uh from the pottery supplier if you buy a powdered rock quite often it will actually have a safety warning on it and it will be basically it'll say like do not breathe this in you know because it, it can damage your lungs so um it, that you know we're talking about materials like quartz uh feldspars um we could talk about like china clays uh, as glaze making ingredients um, could you can use ball clays as well in glazes um, so it's those ingredients um, maybe cornish stone as well and they're all kind of generally like crushed rocks and um, th in powdered form so you would always always need to be wearing an ffp3 face mask for when you know from the very moment that you start like measuring out um, those glazing ingredients to when you have completely finished mixing up the glaze with water 
and you know that there's you know no more powder in the atmosphere then you can take your mask off so you know generally a glaze that's made up as a liquid isn't going to be um dangerous you know in terms of you breathing in that dust it's just when you're mixing the fine powders you're weighing those powders out you're mixing them together um you know when you mix in the water quite often the powder can go up into the you know the the air around you and stuff so it's like those are the situations when you really really need to be wearing your ffp3 face mask from the beginning until you've actually completely and utterly finished making your glaze okay so that's the first one it's just general glaze making um so yeah you have to you have to make sure you're wearing a, an ffp3 face mask then Okay, so the next um, scenario is um, when you're sieving, okay? So, like, this isn't necessarily something you would do unless you were making um, a, a glaze from plant ash. So, again, if you're measuring out those ingredients, you're wearing a face mask, but also if you're sieving ash... Um, you wouldn't also need to be wearing an FFP3 face mask. So I basically, I, <laughs> I absolutely love glazing with plant ashes. It's something I'm really, really interested in. I practice a lot of, um, I'm like, yeah, I, I love experimenting with different plant ashes um, and seeing the different colors they make and different, different glazes they make, different textures. Uh, it, yeah, it's just one of my absolute like passion areas. So, um, but what I do need to do is I need to sieve the ash before I actually make it into a glaze. Because when you're burning plant material, quite often, you know, there's bits that are not burned. Um, if you're burning a wood, there might be bits of charcoal in there. There's also quite a lot of grit in there. You know, even if you're, if you think you're burning something which is quite clean, quite often there'll be like, you know, bits of kind of, soil grit grit and stuff that end up in your ash so you want to be um, always sieving the ash before you're actually making it into a glaze before you're using it as a glaze ingredient so in those situations you also need to wear an ffp3 face mask because ash will go into the atmosphere and ash is actually like caustic so it can harm you know it can irritate your eyes harm your lungs um you know irritate your skin so it's really really important that you know you use proper safety equipment i actually also use like um these goggles when i'm sieving ash so i don't want the ash to go into my eyes and i don't touch the ash with my skin as well so when you're making up an ash glaze you know you don't want to be touching that glaze with your hand you don't really want to be dipping your pot in there um because it can harm it can it can irritate your skin basically um so if you're interested in learning more about um, glazing with plants and you know you want a really simple recipe that you can use with any plant um, I've got all of that in a in a book um, and 60 glaze tests as well for different plants um, um, and the book is called pottery glazing with plant ash 60 plant-based glazes from one simple recipe and it's a very simple recipe it only uses like three different ingredients um, and yeah you can get that from the Oxford clay website and on Amazon as well. Um, so yeah, so that's the second scenario when you might be, you know, you would need an FFP3 face mask is sieving ash <laughs> or sieving any kind of powders. If you're if you're thinking about sieving any other powders, I don't actually sieve any other powders. I always just if I was making a glaze or something, I would sieve that after. Unless I'm making ash glaze, I would sieve the glaze after I've made it, basically. Um, yeah, you don't really need to sieve powders before you make it and make a glaze. If you're just making it with like, you know, ordinary ingredients like quartz, uh, uh, cornwall stone, things like that. Generally, you sieve glazes afterwards when they're wet. Um, okay, so the third scenario is that you might be scraping clay. So I remember when I, um, <laughs> when, when I... <laughs> So when I went to pottery classes, the teacher would always say to me, like, don't scrape dry clay, you know, so basically this is when clay is like kind of, you know, it's fully dried out, it might be bone dry or something, you don't want to be scraping it, they would always just say to us, please, please, please don't scrape your clay, and that's because of the clay dust. And, um, you know, they didn't want clay dust around, they didn't want clay dust, people breathing it in, they just didn't want it in the pottery studio at all. Um, so generally speaking, if you've got something which is like dry clay, you want to be like sponging it instead with like a damp sponge. And that helps to minimize any dust that's coming off that, you know, that piece as you're kind of like, you know, finishing it off or something. So you... Um, if, you, if for, for any reason you did need to scrape dry clay, that's the situation when you would really need an FFP3 face mask. So, 
Um, I'm trying to think of a situation when you would be doing this. Maybe, maybe perhaps if you're like maybe carving a dry piece of clay. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's something that pot, pot, a potter might do. Um, or if say like there's a bit which you just wanted to, I don't know, really, you know, smooth out and take, you know, using a sponge would be like too long or something. Or, you know, you wanted to carve some holes in dry clay, maybe drill some holes or something. I mean, generally speaking, people would do a lot of those processes at the leather hard clay stage because it's just easier to work with the clay at that stage and um, dry clay can often be quite brittle and prone to breakage but um, I can, yeah I can see some situations when you might be scraping um, scraping dry clay so like if you want to sort of change the shape of something you know you just think oh actually I'm just gonna make that side a bit thinner or something and you know really scrape it down um, and a sponge just isn't going to cut it it's going to take me hours to do it with sponge then I can see that you know you might be scraping it with a knife or something um so in those situations that would create clay dust and ideally you really do need to be wearing an ffp3 face mask for though for that okay so the fourth scenario is if you are spraying glaze so some potters actually apply their glaze to their pots by spraying it on and i've actually never done this but in the pottery studio that i learned pottery in the um, the educational setting um, they had it was an incredible pottery studio they had lots of you know different equipment it was like adult evening classes loads of adults would attend it was like in this um adult kind of um, education college and um so yeah people were using that pottery studio all day you know for various different classes and they'd be doing qualifications there as well um and they had um this thing called like a glazing booth and this was specifically if you were actually spraying glaze onto a pot. So it was like a kind of giant kind of hoover type situation <laughs> where you could set your pot in this booth and then you could spray it with the glaze and then it would kind of make sure that none of that those glaze vapours, you know, that powdered glaze was going into the atmosphere and like, you know, you breathing it in. But if spraying glaze is something um, that, you know, you wanted to maybe experiment with, um, then you would definitely need to be wearing an FFP3 face mask because you really don't want to be breathing in any of those glaze, you know, those glaze particles at all. So, um, yeah, so those are the four scenarios. Um, yeah, I hope I haven't like freaked you out with like, <laughs> you know, you must wear a face mask at these times. But um, it's really just to say, like, just, just, I wanted to do this episode because I wanted to just show you that actually, you know, pottery is extremely safe and, you know, there are only a few scenarios when you do need to be wearing the FFP3 face mask. Generally speaking, you don't need it if you're making, you know, just making pottery normally or, you know, you're always using a sponge, always keeping your space really, you know, clean of clay dust and stuff. Um, it's only really if you're going to be making your own glaze, sieving plant ashes or sieving any, any other ingredients, um, scraping a lot of clay or spraying glaze you, that you're going to need your ffp3 face mask so yeah so oh, i love talking to you about ffp3 face mask um, my trusty ffp3 face mask is um it's just brilliant i love it and um yeah where every time i make a glaze and like i said to you i make a lot of i've been making a lot of plant late plant based glazes recently plant ash based glazes um and um yeah thank you so much for joining me on this episode and um uh, yeah can't wait to see you on the next one and until then wishing you very very happy potting and i'll see you soon bye bye thank you so much for joining me for the oxford clay pottery podcast if you're interested in learning more about oxford clay or eco-conscious pottery there's so much for you on the oxford clay website there's books e-courses there's a blog on there um, loads of other podcast episodes and i can't wait to share it with you the web address is oxfordclay.co.uk i'll see you over there